hi everyone and welcome back to my channel so today I'm trying to attempt something different from what I've been doing earlier so so far we have been using ANSYS to simulate the kind of flows uh, so far we have done single phase flows steady and transient and recently I illustrated how you can do a multi-phase simulation but uh, recently I was doing an assignment on PIV that is particle image velocimetry so before I describe it any further I would like to tell you something about it so PIV is a flow visualization technique it is an experimental technique it is not based on any simulation we actually perform an experiment to see the flow it allows us to see the flow and today I want to talk to you about it and one of the reason why this is interesting for someone like me it, it's because that um, after PIV I mean after you see the flow the part is not over and there there is a lot of thing that needs to be done so when I when I was in the lab and when I saw the flow happening that was not it so I got the data and then I have to do a lot of post processing of the data to get my results and there's then the computational part of the fluid dynamics comes into the picture so that's the reason why I wanted to include PIV in on my YouTube because uh, even if you're doing something experimental uh, you always need the computational power or some some part of the coding to make that happen so in the series of videos um, I'm not sure how many videos I would want to upload on PIV but definitely I don't want to finish it up in one video so in this first part I would like to talk to you something about PIV like uh, it's most about the theoretical foundation so if you're not familiar with the PIV I would look, just like to give you an overview and uh, if you're if already know what, what what's PIV and how you do that so you have to wait for the next part because in the next part I would show you what you can do with the images so in the next parts I would use MATLAB and uh, we would use MATLAB to write our own codes to explore the images and we'll play along with the images that we'll get using any PIV experiment so for the next parts I would be giving you an images and you can write your own codes you'd be able to write your own codes and you'll be able to work your way with them so to begin with what is PIV so as I said earlier that PIV is a flow visualization technique and by that I mean something like this so this is a typical PIV setup so as you can see that there is a lot of awkward things over here so to make life easy let me just call the number two and number three as the laser setup uh, if you're not getting it straight away just hold for a while and I will show you what's happening over here and the number four is the flow domain we're just calling these so that I can explain it to you in a while and the number one as it looks like it's a camera so because PIV is a flow visualization technique so we need a camera of course we need to see the flow and to capture the images we of course need a camera the reason why we need a laser setup is to light up the flow and when I say light up the flow it means that of course there are fluids which you cannot see for example air that's the uh, most fundamental and most abundant fluids in the atmosphere over here so if you want to see an air flow you cannot just see it using the camera because you cannot really see so to enable you to see the flow what we do is we add some particles we add some small particles we call them as the seeding particles in the flow and by using lasers you uh, you can actually see those particles so if I have if I have a mixing of these particles throughout the flow and if I put the laser on those on the flow domain I could actually see these particles so the laser over here would allow us to see the particles and because the particles would move along the flow so indirectly we are visualizing the flow but we also need a camera to take the images so how the system work over here 
it's pretty easy so uh, suppose if I have a flow domain in which I have I'm having a flow so um, for a very simple case you can think of it as a channel flow or a pipe flow don't think of uh, gravity for now so you can say that the flow is happening from up to the down and if you have already mixed these particles in your flow so the basic fund of mixing these particles is that they shouldn't influence the flow physics itself so you don't want a lot of particles so that the part the volume of the particles or the density of the particle would influence the primary flow physics and we don't want a very less number of particles because when we take the images when we take the images of this section we want at least enough particles to carry out the analysis in MATLAB so that 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 is a general idea about the the density of the particle or the number the mass density of the particles so when we mix the particles and when the flow is happening we illuminate the flow using the laser setup so usually uh, you can find on a lot of internet resources and in a lot of books about the lasers so we use lasers around um, 400 to 500 nanometer range so just just take a note of this so i'm not really an expert on lasers but uh, that's the general wavelength of the lasers that we use and once we have the laser and then we can use the camera to take the pictures so now how do we take the pictures so suppose if you if you have the initial particle setting something say something like this we have like a 12 particles at at a time t1 and then if we take another photo and in we see particles because this is a flow from the top to the bottom or in the negative y direction so the particles will move along this direction so of course the particle would shift into the y direction so at a time t2 you can have a different images in which the particles would be shifted downwards and that is the key to PIV so in PIV we want to correlate this particular displacement so this particular displacement can be calculated in using MATLAB and because uh, this T1 and the T2 these time delays we call them as the time delay for the images so this could be called as the initial image and the time delay for the initial image and this is like the time delay for the final image so because we're usually interested in the velocity so the velocity would be delta x or delta y it depends on which direction we are studying so it could be delta x or delta y over delta t so we know delta t because we can um, so suppose if you're recording with a camera that ha that that has a frequency of 50 Hertz so you can get your delta t as 1 over 50 and because you can take the photos in in the interval of delta t so using those two images so using image 1 in the blue and image 2 in the red you can calculate delta x and also you can calculate delta y so usually when the flow so if if you consider if you if you consider a channel flow or a pipe flow in real life so in simulation we obviously we consider those flow to be unidirectional but when you'll do the experiment you'll find that those flows are not really unidirectional and there's always a wall normal component so what i mean to say is that if you have a pipe like this so when whenever we do the simulation we just say that we just have a u component and we assume that v is zero everywhere but in reality it, it's not really the case so in reality we don't have the v as zero so when you'll do the experiment if you're lucky enough to go into the lab and actually do the piv you'll find that uh, u would be of course much larger than v but v won't be equal to zero there would be some small component of v and there would be major component of u so using the experimental techniques we can actually see what's happening in the real world scenarios and we're not in the imaginary and ideal world of the simulation so i hope uh, i'm clear with the uh, basic 
the ideology of PIV. So to summarize, we seed the flow and by seeding I mean we put some particles in the flow and those particles can scatter off light when we hit them with the laser. So and the next and, and after seeding we hit the laser onto the flow or onto the particles and we capture those particles as image in you by using a camera and we take successive images at successive time intervals and then we do some post processing which i would explain in the next video so we have to do so the only part that's left with is over here so the part that's left with is to get the delta x otherwise we're pretty much done we know the delta t we want the velocity but we don't have the delta x so in the next part i'll show you like i'll first explain you the uh, the theory behind the calculation of delta x there is something called cross correlation so what we'll be doing in the next tutorial is that we'll try to cross correlate these two different images to get the value of displacement and that displacement would allow us to calculate the velocity and that velocity would further allow us to calculate all the parameters of interest that we want such as the shear stress or the drag so particle uh, image velocimetry is a very useful technique so it, it's uh, relatively simpler you don't need a lot of uh, equipments you just need uh, you can use a DSLR camera to record or to take the pictures you can use a moderate uh, exp moderately expensive laser to illuminate the flow and you can use PIV in water so you can have some glass spheres as the seeding particles in water and for air you can use smoke and that would allow you to uh, get the flow data for even for the liquids and for the gases and it's very robust technique so it has been used for quite a long time so just hang on for this particular videos and in the next video i'll try to demonstrate you how to how you use the cross correlation to get the value of delta x and further the velocity thank you so much and if you have any questions just feel free to ask me and because i am new to the experimental fluid dynamics so i may not be able to explain you the piv part that good uh, but i've tried my best and I'll, I'll, I'll put some references on PIV in the description box below. So I hope that if you if you find any problem understanding the basic idea of PIV, just go through them. I hope that it would help you. And still, if you have any questions, I'd be much more glad to help you out with that. Thank you so much. And if you really like my video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.